almost everybody that has much of any land at all has a stream running through it and most every stream has a place that it's needing some repair and some patching on and we think seed is one of the best and most cost effective ways to do it. We're at our stream bank project getting ready to overseed this area for the second time because we still have gravel, bare banks that we want to get some some different species growing on. So I brought the grandkids here today because I want them to remember this stream and what they did so that as this area heals itself, they can tell a story about what the Ozarks used to look like. The stream bank mix design that we've created here is for soils that are both higher up in elevation, but they're, they're good soils because this is a creek bottom, but not necessarily that wet all the way down to the gravel bar and the water line. So there are species in here that like it from both ranges. A lot of diversity in this mix to help it fit in a lot of situations, different creek banks and stuff like that. So Jake, I like you letting that seed just fall down that bank. Kind of put it at the top and it'll just fall down. This is a diverse native grassland that we are actively intensive grazing. This is working land. We can get grazing days up there and we can get them down here too and we don't have to damage our ecosystem to do this. We can make this a healthier stream and use it for something at the same time. These stream banks are a little bit fragile whenever you get started planting them, but over time they become very resilient and you can start utilizing them as a real resource. They're also a great place for wintertime grazing. A lot of your cool seasons and sedges grow down here in this lower levels and that water that's flowing through here actually keeps the ground kind of warm and helps them to grow more. You'll notice a lot of your livestock prefer to come down in the low spots and seek out new fresh green grass in the winter time, which is a great time to be grazing along your creeks. In the heat of the summer, they come down to get a drink, they go back up in the breeze. Every stream has bare spots, has gravel bars, has vertical banks to it. Now a true vertical bank, we don't waste a lot of seed on, uh, but if you could get a few plants started at the bottom of those banks, these vertical banks then start to slope back a little bit. Your sediment starts to fall and you start to get this ridge of plants growing at the bottom of that bank that as I kick some of this loose dirt loose, falls down into those plants and starts to hold and feed those plants. So you're actually not wasting your seed anymore on vertical banks. Eventually as you build more and more soil, you'll start to more this stream will become more of a meandering stream back and forth across this gravel bar. You can see a little bit coming out there of the bank and you got a small river a stream over there. And then over here to the left, we've got another small stream and they come back together and converge as one. This would be what you would call more of a ribbon type stream. If we start to vegetate this gravel bar well, you might have 10 little streams broke up going down through here moving just the same amount of water and a lot less erosive environment. And your plants then become more of a filter plant. Like you hear people talking about below lagoons and whatnot, you plant a filter plant to filter that water, gets the nutrients out of the water as it flows through it. Well, you do the same thing with your stream beds and your gravel bars, your plants kind of become the filter for that sediment instead of just sending it right on down the stream to the Gulf of Mexico or whichever ocean you happen to dump out into. We've got species that do well up on the higher, drier part of the bank. This is out of the root zone of most plants to reach that water, but it's fairly good soil because this is a creek bottom type situation. Then we've got plants that'll do good in the mix in between where their roots will obviously reach down to that water. We call it their feeder dry, but the roots are wet. So the base of the plant is dry. And then you've got plants in here that like you can see today, this switchgrass, he is down in the water. His feet are wet and his roots are wet and he's just fine with that. So we've got species in there that'll do fine over a large area. We've got switchgrass is one that's in your mix. We've got the sunflowers in your mix, which you see some growing low and down to the water there. We've got sunflowers up here that are on top of the banks. This should work everything from prairie soil to woodland soil. The only location I probably wouldn't use this mix would be dense shade. You'd either have to open up some trees or somehow reduce the shade. 
but about anywhere else, even in uh, partial shade, this would be a good stream bank mix to use. Full sun would definitely be where it'll shine the best. And I'm not talking a quarter mile of creek bank with 10 trees along it. Go ahead and plant that all the way. But I'm talking if you've got a stream running through a forested area, that's probably not the location. Parts of this stream bank is getting really held down nice from previous planting. And part of this stream bank still has some issues with exposed gravel or dirt. And what we're really trying to do is vegetate this all the way from one stream bank side to the other, including the part that's under the water. There's quite a few that do that, that'll have both their feet wet and their head wet for a large portion of the year. Hey, Claire, here's one of these foul manna grasses that we planted. A lot of it's kind of kind of brown right now, but it'll be greening up here pretty soon. It's one of the first cool season grasses to green up because the water stays warm, these cool season grasses, and the water begin to grow earlier. This fountain mana grass, and I'll pull your piece up, it is five inches under the water right now from its roots to its top. The top of the leaves are still two inches underneath the water, and they just look like seaweed in there. And you think, well, is that a very good growing condition for them? But if you look, they're plenty green. They're growing just fine. They've probably been underwater for a full month now, maybe even longer here over winter. It's not bothering them at all. Uh, they're doing fine. And this eventually, is, as they grow, they're gonna elongate and they will be up above the water and they might even get that high above the water. So that's an important part of covering your stream bottom as well. It's not just the gravel bars and the side slopes. We can vegetate deeper than that. Probably a month and a half ago, there was a hundred head of bison in this field. So they had access to this whole stream bank. And I'd say, I can see where they bit off some sedges right down here close. But there's foul, another different kind of sedge. They didn't eat and they didn't eat this foul manna grass here either. So I don't really know why they eat some of it better than others. But we have noticed that down close to the water line, it tends to not get grazed as much. The larger the stream, the bigger the floods you get, the more water that comes down it. It'll take more repeated plantings to get these plants going. These smaller streams like this, these work really well for the upper watershed. It's a lot easier to tie down than the lower. And we find to start on the little feeder streams, the upper watershed, it's very important to tie them down before you go downstream. So if you have access to the upper watershed, start there. Any seeds you plant here, the seeds that that plant makes will work its way down that watershed and start seeding further down. Uh, the gravel and stuff that's here, if you don't tie it down, it's gonna wash down to the lower watershed. So it's best to start in the upper watershed if you can. It's a great place, uh, particularly with kids to seed. Sometimes in February, it's a day like today and it's 60 degrees out and sun's shiny and it's fun. Some days it's uh, wind blowing 30 mile an hour and it's 10 degrees and not the day you wanna do it on. So if you get your seed mix and you want to start stretching that planting window, check out our cold moist stratification guides. You can put this mix, wet it down, put it in a refrigerator and start cooling it. You can take it out the day after you put it in or you can take it out up to two weeks later when it's time for you to plant. So just go ahead and check out our stratification guide, but that stretches out your window and reduces your chances of flood between the seeding and germination time. So if we've inspired you to get out and conquer one of your stream banks, uh, this mix will be for sale on our website. Encourage you to check it out there. Also check out our other videos on YouTube. And speaking of other videos on YouTube, Follow us if you want to see how this stream bank progresses over time. We're going to do a follow-up video next summer of seeing the seedlings that we planted today and also the plants from a few years ago and how they look at different times of the year. If you guys have streams that look like this or maybe they're in worse shape than this, there are things you can do. Get out there, plant this stream bank mix this year, uh, give it a shot, see what results you get. Let us know how it turns out for you. Streams are a slow project and it's one you should figure on doing and doing it again in the years to come. Just kind of keep adding seed as you go. A lot of times you can even start picking your own seed along the edge of the stream bank, scattering that as you go through the year. 
Assess how you did, find those spots, order some more mix to put back on the spots that didn't take very good. Uh, but let's get out there and start healing these creek banks because they're an important part of our watershed and we're causing a lot of damage, especially in our bigger rivers by stacking gravel and mud and sandbars up in them. So let's get out and be active and start taking care of this problem.